Ghana is a huge country, but it has an administrative capital from where everything actually is operated. That's Accra, where the president is. And the president has lieutenants across the country known as MMDCEs. In Accra, he has a metropolitan chief executive. My guest on Face to Face today is a man who leads the charge for developing Accra, Mohamed Ni Ajesoa. So on Face to Face today, we are looking at the general plan to develop Accra, to move Accra so that you could have it be described as a crabesher like we see when we go abroad to other capitals. Rwanda's capital, Kigali, seems to be the yardstick for measuring on the continent. But we can also look at the global picture and see how we are faring. Honorable Mayor for Accra, you're welcome to Face Thank to Face. You, you transcended uh, or transcended, not transcended, you moved from politics to administration. You were a regional party officer, now you are into, you are into administration. Has it been different for you, running the two offices? Well, I'd, I'm sure because uh, I was quite active in politics, people could remember my political background. But I would, uh, I've been a development practitioner, and politics wasn't actually paying me. So I was actively working on development issues across the country. I'd, I was doing projects in Western region, Eastern region, Greater Accra, um, and then part of uh, Eastern region and Volta region, not up north. So I've been quite an active person on the development front. But people remember the politics and that sort. The succession plan generally for politicians is that you are a ward chairman or branch chairman, become a constituency executive, become an MP, or you go to the regional secretariat and become a regional executive, which is what you became possibly go to parliament or contest the national elections. But then you just diverted to become a mayor of Accra. Are there plans to be an MP? No, I've been, I've been active also in politics. I've been, I've been a, a youth leader in Oduro way back in 1998 uh, when I was a youth chairman. I became a constituent secretary in Oduro in 2006. Subsequently, a parliamentary candidate for Ododo Dodo in 2008 elections where I lost. And then became the party's regional secretary for two terms where I led the charge to beat the NDC in the 2016 elections. So going to parliament has been part of my ambition once, uh, but currently I'm occupying a position where I'm serving the, at the uh, pleasure of the president mm. but you have plans to still contest or that desire that, that could be that could be considered in future but for now the focus is on delivery on the promises made by the president or do you do seem to be one fleeting constituency for you or one constituency which you are never able to catch up with as MPP you may have done once or twice but it's always a difficult constituency for you what's the problem with Odo do you do well I, I think that the NDC really appreciated the the politics of Ododo Dudu probably more than art. And let me explain why. Um, as the people are very vivacious, quite active, and the NDC plays to their minds and emotions all the time. Whilst we go there and talk about development, if you compare NDC track record as against NPP track record in Ododo Dudu, I mean it's so it's so glare. Um, currently, as we speak now, the NDC had been in office for eight years. There was nothing to show in you know, the I mean, if they have something to show, they could say it. But we've been in office for barely um, three and a half years. Um, there's a reconstruction of the Jamestown Fishing Harbor, which was relocated to Tema way back in 1965. And the harbor was the bedrock of the local economy of Accra. And once it was relocated, relocated to Tema, that was a major contributive factor to our poverty situation in Accra. Because everybody uh, relies on the activities at the fishing harbor. Then again, uh, the Salaga market, which is the only fish market we have in Accra, uh, for over 25 years, which um, it was abandoned, um, as I speak to you now, under the $1 million one constituency project. Um, the Salaga market, over 30% um, 
construction had been done and is, on, and is ongoing. And, and many other projects, the Osha Polyclinic has been, uh, has gotten a facelift in the, the Bukum Square, which the famous Bukum Square where almost every footballer had played football there. You know, used to have stones underground which looked like spikes and everybody that kicks ball over there might have been hit one way or the other, including my good self. Mm. Today we've seen an astroturf at Bokum Square, which is totally different because our players want to play football in Europe and elsewhere, and yet you are training on a Sakura Park. How do you compete over there? So that's that major developmental push in Ududu do that I can beat my chest that never in the history of, 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 of the Fourth Republic that we have seen such a significant development over there. Is a Bukum boxing arena in Ududu do or Ablik myself? Well, it is on the border. So it's would you say that what you have listed now surpasses what was left by the NDC in the Bukum boxing arena? The, the, the Bukum boxing arena is not a government of Ghana project. It's a snitch project. Yeah, but there was a government that has to take a credit for it. At of any course. Point. I mean, then everything by every private company, everybody has to take credit for it. You are taking credit for VW constructing cars or assembling cars in Accra. So that, 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 that should be the credit. The thing. credit being taken by government on that, it's part of a major government policy of promoting... Uh, the use of brand new cars. I'm sure it's the same thing that you know, so, so, the party will say. But so, my point is that so if you're listing these things, remember that there's a boxing arena. I have there's I, also I, the I have not I have not what's have the not name of the, the the one near the Tema station? The is, is it hockey it is? The hockey pitch? Yes. The hockey pitch is in Clotty Okay. So pitch, I'm just saying I'm just mentioning I mean, generally things. The, the hockey pitch is in Clotty mm -hmm. and which was given a facelift. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that in terms of development, our party and our government philosophy is to bring development to the people okay. and do not intend to keep the people in perpetual poverty and play on their minds and their emotions and use them as electoral tools. So you think you develop so do, 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 do better as of MPP? Course, of course. Okay. Of course. Tell me if this will translate into votes, you think? So, so, so that's what we are working on now. Because, as I indicated earlier, whilst you're talking about development and pointing at things that you have done, your opponent will also be looking at other things and be talking about how to fight people, um, how to get people angry, uh, and taking advantage of some of these things, the poverty situation there, the illiteracy rate over there, and then be promoting all kinds of bad things. And these are things that does not sink to our orientation. We are not good at doing so. So you either have to learn of doing those bad things to win votes or push hard to get the people change their mind to let them appreciate development that you put us in office to develop the communities. And that is the message. But if so you, it's if, taking if, us a bit of time mm. to get the people to appreciate some of these things. But if you develop, it should be natural. I should know that there's a boxing arena or Bukum Square that has been done for me. So yeah. for this reason, I should go for the elephant. If beyond all these things, you still have to go and convince and explain to the people that, look, you have to vote for us, and someone can use something else to defeat you, then it means you haven't really done well, have you? Well, I'm saying that uh, in political dynamics, it doesn't work that way. Because um, you may have done something which you think it is right, um, but someone will sit there and ask himself, look, I don't play football, so what is in it for me? Or my need now, it's like, I'm hungry, I need food today. So all the things that you are asking us to do, to go to school, free SHS, planting for food and jobs, and all the good things that you are talking about, it, it's a work in progress, and it will take a bit of time for me to earn a living. Okay. I need money today, so what do I get today? I'm mindful of the fact that we have several Ghana constituencies. Sure. But would you agree that Ododo Dio Dio is perhaps the richest Ghana constituency, i.e. is the only constituency which is predominantly Ghana? And that if this constituency has often swung towards the NDC, then there's a likelihood that N Ghana people by nature are NDC. Would that be a fair analysis? I'm tapping not into your, your knowledge not, of not your, your own ethnic group and the region. Not, not at all. I mean, that's, uh, over the years, the constituency is getting more diluted. If you go to a place like Teshi, you have 
I mean, heavy numbers of Ghana people. In fact, the voter population of Lejikuku is, is bigger than the voter population even of Ododo Dudu, which part of it is the central business district where people come to trade and then go away. And but so you would agree that Lejikuku, other areas like Spintex and so on, may not necessarily... But the numbers, the numbers are in, more in the coastal, in the, in the coastal, in the coastal, coastal okay. towns. Okay. You know, that's okay. where the numbers are. So you can get a lot of the numbers there. La Dadekoto post to get a lot of the gun numbers there. Okay. And then Nungwa. So it's not, fair, as, it's not a fair statement not to make all. at all. Not at all. You have to do it. There are, there are some constituencies along the coast that you may, you, may, you may agree with me that because of the heavy gun population there, um, it seems to be swinging all the time. And it is not only Odo Odudu. You have to use Kowo, Lejikuku, Ladadokotopong, Plotikoli to some extent, mm. and then Odo Odudu. So these are the five constituencies. You may say that Tema, but Tema, there's a lot of Ghana people there, but Tema, it's very cosmopolitan. Yeah. Very, very cosmopolitan. The closest you can get is Tema East, which is maybe a bit yeah, more. Yeah, Tema, Tema New Town, where yeah. you can get quite a number of Ghana people, but there's a lot of Dangbe and then our population there because it's close to the sea and these ethnic tribes also the activities are mainly fishing so you have a lot of um, uh, non guns also i know as politicians you may not admit to failures here and there but are there constituencies that as a governing party you're scared of losing losing well uh, as i speak to you now certainly there may be few constituencies that we have a challenge but the election is not today. Mm. It comes, it's scheduled for 7 December 2020. It's two months away, two and a half months. It's two and a half months away. Mm. One day, one day can make a difference in politics. Can that one day be different because of money that has been given to the voters? It because be, you can't develop be, a constituency in a day. Be, it could be several things. I mean, your opponent, your opponent can make a, a yeah. huge statement which could be you know, swing people can take it. advantage of it and swing votes about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a couple of days ago, I've been reading about um, um, candidate Jomama talking about uh, constructing mortuaries for uh, in the Muslims' communities. I mean, that that is not on for Muslims. So, are you sure you are a Muslim? Of course, I am. You know, Muslims don't like their corpses kept in mugs. Yes. You know that. So that's not a priority. So if you're you also a Muslim, and you know that's not a priority. Yeah, but if you listen to what he said. Because whether you like it or not, Muslim corpses will be sent to the morgue before they are taken away. So during that period, he's saying that they should be treated with some s level of um, Islamic rights or whatever it is. That if you listen to him, but I saw him. That's a standard practice in every, in every morgue. Mm. That's a standard practice in every morgue. The point is that what is your priority? As a priority for Muslim communities to build morgues for them or to provide them with education employment, capacity building. That's what you mean. But you, don't, death, you, don't have, you don't have a lot of resources. Death is a constant in every community. Of course, death is and a you constant. know how Islam holds death highly. It's one of very the well, key things that very are considered. Well, very so well. if he says he's going to provide facilities for Muslims to you know, bury their dead or keep their dead, that shouldn't be a problem. And you, and you know very well that uh, as a Muslim, your, your, your cause may not lie down for more than 24 hours Yes. until there's something happening or maybe the person died in the night mm -hmm. then we have to make sure that we, we, we bury the person the following mm. morning. There are some tribes that even they do bury in the evening. In the night. Let, let's not digress. Tell me why Greater Accra should swing for more for Nana. Well, I, I think that in terms of accounting to the people, what we have done for the good people of Greater Accra is enough. Greater Accra is a cosmopolitan and the capital of Ghana, and every effort that we have made in developing this nation, um, Greater Accra has gotten its fair share of it. That's number one. Number two, um, in terms of infrastructure development, we've also done so well. Uh, not, as, general, not as well as NDC did. Like what? Not as well as NDC did. So you want us to compare? Yeah, I'm just asking. No, of if course. We, if we talk about infrastructure development, yes. if the NDC wants to match you boot for boot in a debate, when yes. they point to Ridge Hospital, 
when they point, point to the circle interchange, when they point to the hospitals they have in Shaiwo, Sudoku, for instance, at Dodoa, at Ga East, and all of these places, Madina, mm -hmm. um, what would you point to as MPP? Well, I'll be pointing to a lot of things as they'll well. They'll point to the Ablikuma Of course, they'll point road. to, when they point to... They'll point, point to the Pukwasi interchange. They'll point to the... Uh, the How would they point to the Pukwasi interchange? They left it behind. It was under construction before... It wasn't December. under construction. It wasn't? It wasn't what, would you, what would you point to when they point to these so things? The, so that's the point. That point is very fair. It's not that. It wasn't under construction. Same they left as, it behind. Same as, same, uh, same as... Whatever. You see, government is a continuous. And the point also is that you ask yourself, Yes, and they did, did the NDC did the circle interchange, mm -hmm. and yet they lost. Because when you are in Accra, you are not just looking at the infrastructure. The people of Accra, they are enlightened enough to know that it's a tax, taxpayer's money that you are investing. So they want value for money. And when you overprice the, the, the cost of construction and claim that I have done for this for you, the people will vote you out. Yeah, but if you claim that they have been overpricing and after four years you have not prosecuted a single person successfully for overpricing or sent any company home, but instead, Queros Galvao, which did the circle interchange, you've contracted them to do another project, then you have no moral standing to be making statements about overpricing. Instead, they'll ask you to point to hard facts. What did you do instead? So, so, so let me respond to that. Mm -hmm. You know, in government, and it's not like running a private sector company, in government, there's a procedure to, to follow. And that's what a lot of government officials had done over the past. So long as you have followed the procedure and lead to the award of the contract, whatever that comes out from it, whether overpricing and all the things that have come out from it, you are unable to prosecute the person as why? a result of that. And why? That's, that's a standard fact. And that's why it's becoming a major challenge for the prosecution of a lot of people. What prevents you? You know, so as you move on, as you move, as you move on, and you make that comparison, and then you looked at places like um, the Obechebilante interchange, which is also under construction. You've looked at uh, the the Pokwase interchange, which is under construction. And you've looked at also the, uh, the motorway, uh, the motorway uh, interchange that has also been constructed and looked at the value as compared to even those ones that you claim that they left for us. You will, you, will, you will ask yourself, how come that they might have gone to negotiate for um, a construction of a three-tier uh, uh, interchange at Pokwase? But we have come and renegotiated it for a fourth year and expanded even the road network to it. What happened? So if the infrastructure agreement is put on the table and NDC lists what they have done in Greater Accra, and from, there's, from there's, Adan there's, to Wager, from uh, Accra to Amasama, there's, there's a, what will work a for conscious, you? And there's a conscious effort to even provide infrastructure in every community. One point is that the central government has set up development authorities, providing them with funds to make sure that you provide development to the communities for the needs that they have. So need assessment has been done, and if they claim that they want a market, you provide market You're for referring them. to the Coastal you know, Development Authority? Of course, you know, that's what What have they done? I'm listing all, all the things that I mentioned here, they were yeah, done they, by the Coastal Development so Even the you do, in the you do, the, the Salaga market, what is costing over 20 million Ghana cities? It's Koda. It's Koda. Okay. The AstroTurf, which they constructed at the Bukum Park, is Koda. Same is being done at the Manchagona Park, is Koda. So the list can go on and on and on. They've constructed roads also in the Kankwe South mm. um, with their money. Um, when it comes to Ablikuma South, um, they, are, they, are, they are about constructing the bridge that links the Choco to Dansuma, you know. Um, you recall that there was a bridge which was there. Um, the rain brought it down. Is it a floating bridge? And then uh, Madame Eslausu, um, through his effort, brought a floating bridge 
But our which information was, which was is washed that, away. No, our information is that um, there were people who were making money out of it, and they didn't like the floating bridge. So the matter was reported at the police, and it's been it's still under investigation. How? People were apprehended. You think people? Okay, of so, course, so you suspect that people of tamp course, tampered with of the bridge? Of course, Jerry Ahmed Shaib, who is a lawyer and the chief executive for Coastal Development Authority, made a, a formal complaint to the police on that. People were apprehended. And then the matter is what did they do? They, they untie the rope holding of the bridge. Course, that's what they, that's told. how can the bridge disappear? That's what I'm told he did. That's crazy. I don't know. What do you know about the marine drive? I've heard so much about it. What is happening to the marine drive? Well, I mean, the marine drive, it's, for me, it's one major project that would have changed the whole development landscape of Accra. If you look at Accra, because it used to be, during the colonial times, it, it used to be a location where you have the slave masters and the forts. It, the development of Accra was not facing the, the sea. The back of Accra was facing the sea. And in any modern development in, 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 in civilized or Western countries, you will appreciate that the beachfront is the most prime. Meanwhile, our back is rather facing. So the essence of the marine drive is to change this development paradigm and make sure that we'll be facing the sea. So we utilize the sea. Exactly. So beautification agenda. It is not just beautification. It's to provide infrastructure and to make our city more modern. Okay. And take advantage of the beachfront okay. and make sure that. that. Um, as far as I know, um, at the moment, the... the uh, the land has been given out to private developers because that's the whole concept. The concept is that it's not government that is providing the funding. Mm. It's a government land, and the government is allocating the land to developers. And the developers are giving timelines to make sure you develop. Because we've learned from the development of the airport city. The airport city development was, was started without giving developers timelines. So as I speak to you now, there are still uncompleted buildings at Airport City. That shouldn't be. Okay. So we're learning from the Marine Drive, and that has been done. Um, uh, they are yet to, they have cleared the place, as I speak to you now. All the government properties that were, I mean, the government offices that were on the property yeah. there has been moved to the Ghana okay. House. So the land is now lying fallow. Okay. For, for, for development to commence. This is face-to-face uh, -face on CTTV. My name is Umaru Sandamad. My guest is the Metropolitan Chief Executive for Accra, Mohamed Ni Ajay Soa. We are having a conversation generally on the Great Accra region. We'll be back to talk more on Accra, cleanest city in Africa. How far have we gone? And making Accra a resilient city, what does that even mean? And what have we done so far? Don't just watch, be wowed, get fired up, get down, catch views, drop the mic, choose to be moved, on the move, hot spot, any spot, enjoy a new view, walk in another shoes, power heels, paws, and feet. Take your stories to the streets, hold court with court queens, ice queens, and yas queens, fly away, come back home, and enjoy online entertainment on any screen. Sign up at showmax.com and change the way you watch. Election 2020, Ghana makes a choice. Tracking and bringing you reports of the presidential and parliamentary campaigns across the length and breadth of this nation. Analyzing campaign activities and election data with our panelists on the Voters' Diary. The Voters' Diary is the most factual, instructive, and balanced election 2020 analysis program on television. The Voters' Diary, every weekday on City TV from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Stay informed on all the relevant issues on election 2020. Tune into the Voters' Diary, it's Ghana's choice. You welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. My guest is the mayor of Accra, Mohamed Nia uh, When the president said he was going to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa, did he really mean it? 
Well, I, I think that it's important for us as a country to come to terms that we need to think big and aim high. And that's the intent of the president, that Ghana was among the pioneers of development way back during the immediate uh, past colonial time. And over a long period of time, we seem not to be paying attention to very important matters. And that has eluded us up to now. In his plans and in his vision, he thinks that Ghana must rise and play among the big players. And that's what he meant by it. And that's why you all of us have to aim by. So it was just a statement of encouragement. It, is not it was not going to be real. It is intended to be a statement to encourage everybody and put in the machinery to make sure we get there. Now, have, have we got if, in there? If, if, as a country, that over the years, sanitation has been a big problem, and not to go too, too far. As of 2014, Accra was partly Christian at the seventh dirtiest city in, in the world. Certainly, you will not be proud of it. And there's a need for, some, for us to do something about it. By 2015, there was a huge cholera outbreak. Over 20,000 people were affected in Accra. 200 people or more died in Accra, just as a result of cholera. It's almost like COVID. But these are all preventable diseases, in my view, as a, a public health crisis that we got into. And what the president has done is to link issues of sanitation to health and the economy. And I will explain all these things as we move on. So to declare Accra and work towards making a cleaner city in Africa, it's for our own call and our, our own advantage. And I'm happy, if for nothing at all, Ghanaians in general have come to terms that it's a good call and we need to work towards it. But what's it the use is of not like It is not like those calls that people would think that this is empty, but this is a matter which is apolitical. It's a matter that everybody is concerned about it. Working towards making a crack clean, three things that you look at. You're looking at infrastructure, you're looking at enforcement, and then you're looking at education. Enforcement and education are soft parts that you can easily do. Infrastructure is not an off-the-shelf product that you can get. It's over a period of time that you're supposed to work towards it. So as of 2015, I'm sure a lot of media houses in 2017 and 2018 media houses were talking a lot about sanitation. We are in 2019-2020, and I'm sure the, the hub on sanitation, the talk about sanitation that Accra is filthy, you know, has gone down. No, it's just it hasn't gone so, down. So don't worry, we'll, we'll get there. Choco is smelling. we we'll get there. The we'll beachfront is dirty. We'll, get there. we'll the, get there. The drain by the president's residence in Nima is horrible, it's choked. Clearly, the, the statement that Accra will be a cleaner city by the end of his tenure is a joke, isn't it? So, 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 so we are working towards making sure that... You've been working for far too long. It's four years. Of course. We're giving you, you, for, you put that commitment to yourself. Of no course, one really but the four years me. is not over. It's just uh, two months. The four years is not over. So you need to assess us that, okay, we're working towards four years. What have we done? And do you see improvement or not? What have you and done? Then, and that's me. the problem, you mm. know. Sometimes statements are made like, you know, and you are pointing to some other areas. Certainly, we must admit that the project is not completed yet. There are some low-income communities that we still have a challenge, which, of course, we are working towards it. But as you move around the city all the time, and you claim that you know, the highways, you can see heaps of refuse, the mountains of refuse, you have stopped reporting it because there is nothing to show again over there. And these are facts that you need to report on. What we are came they? to see over 40 heaps of mountains of refuse in Accra. Mm -hmm. Today, we've managed to clear more than 35 of it. I would say that there are one or two which are left. There's one in front of the ICGC behind the, uh, behind the onion salads there, which has been there for over 20 to 25 years. 
we are still working towards it to use the garage to make sure we're cleared. But there used to be a mountain of refuse at Okumblo, just you know, opposite the, the University of Ghana. Now the place is turned into a flower garden, and people are selling you know flowers over there under the um, uh, wager Bawe that interchange over there. There used to be another heap of refuse there. It had been there for like over 15 years. It was covered. We, we deployed a military over there to make sure that nobody came to dump over there. Today, the place is turned into a market and people are selling over there. There are many that I can count for you for you to know. So the point that you are saying that we have not done that, like nothing, you are very wrong about that one. Oh. You need to correct that one. I must admit, I, should be I must that. admit, I must admit mm. that mm. there are other areas that we haven't completed working on it. And you can make reference to Choco. I'm a member, That's a fact. I'm a that member, you know. I'm a That's member, a fact and you can work with I'm a member but of we are the, working towards it. I'm a member of the Media Coalition on Open Defecation. Of course. As we speak, open defecation is ongoing in Ashaiman. It's mm. going on in several communities in Accra, Nungwa, people defecate in the drains and so on. Now, that is a fact. If you're saying that you're making Accra the cleanest city, you can't have people defecating. At the beachfront, at La, it still happens. You have a team uh, at the assembly level in the La municipality, for instance, what they told me, uh, that they're going to be sending people to the beachfront. That has not happened. People still do that. I know that this government has a concept called mayors without borders, where you are operating I mean, in, a, in, a, in an interconnected way. So you generally ensure Accra is properly demarcated and built and looks good. But that is not happening. You cannot say to me that you have fixed the sanitation problems of Accra. So, so in 2016, 2017, when we took office, mm -hmm. in addressing the issues of open defecation, what we done was to make sure that we provided household toilets for people at a subsidized rate. Mm -hmm. As I speak to you now, by 2017, when we took office, we built, the NDC had built about 1,400. As I speak to you, we've built over close to 30,000 household toilets. Okay, under the Gamma project. I'm saying that whether under whatever project is government project, we've mm -hmm. built over 30,000. Mm -hmm. So get your facts right. Mm -hmm. And I'm providing you figures to support whatever but, but I'm you doing. But you see, it doesn't mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that the problem has been fully eradicated. Okay. But the interventions that we have made, mm -hmm. else it would have been worse than that. Okay. And you must appreciate that. We've reduced the burden to more of insignificant when position you, when, that we when the president So when you point out to certain mm. areas, I'm not running away from that fact. Mm. I'm saying that you point out to Choco, and I'm saying that, yes, I know that we have a problem in Choco. Mm. But why are you not pointing out to the other areas where we have done significant no, well? Because you are looking at the whole of Accra. And because it will be you fair to all of us. Mm. Because the people see... you, you do, you know something about sanitation? No. Sanitation is something that you cannot hide. There's something that waste management contractor told me one day, that sanitation matters, you can't hide. And because it will smell bad, the media will go there. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that he told me in 2017. It has guided me up to now. So on matters of sanitation, I like to discuss it based on the facts available to us. You know what I mentioned? So Chocolate. when you were talking about it, in fact, you and I, when we were doing the one Ghana movement, mm -hmm. on the Independence Avenue, there used to be lots of refuse on, on that stretch. Today, you move on that stretch, and you don't find refuse over there. We provided enough people that are working day and night on this road. Come to the Central Business District, where in 2017, 2018, your media house and many media houses mm -hmm. has been reported of unattended heaps of refuse over mm -hmm. there. 2018, 2020, 2020, you are not reporting on that because mm -hmm. there's no refuse for you to go and report. There on is that. a lot of refuse. Well, Two nights ago on the City Newsroom on City TV, my colleague Nado Limofat was in Choco, like I've mentioned. You're still going and, back to Choco? Yes, We've because... Called, we are, you are overflogging the issue no, of Choco. When she so went, where? You know, so no, no, no. See, the thing is that the youth of Choco have decided to deceive their gutters if government will not do it. But they say that the sub-metro is not even providing them with basic tools for Those that Those people that you interview, the first person that you interview mm -hmm. is the campaign manager for Okova Nabwe. Okay. You yeah. went and interviewed politically aligned people. Uh, and right, you were in front, talking right in front of a I'm dirty, a dirty that drain. That I'm that saying that you that, went that and That his NDC color prevents the death from being in the drain, which, which was 
captured by our cameras? You went and interviewed politically aligned people. Okay. And they have made commentaries just to make us look bad. I am saying that in Choco, for instance, admittedly, we have challenges in Choco. Mm -hmm. But we are looking at the whole of Accra. So don't, don't restrict the discussion to Choco. So it's not true that the drains of Choco are choked? I have not said so. So what's the point of I the NDC? I have repeatedly told you that in Choco we had problems. So you have a problem in Choco? Of course. Why don't I you have a problem? You have a problem in Teshi. We have problems in Teshi. Yes. Where? You have a problem You in haven't gone to Teshi. Go I, to Teshi. I have gone to Teshi. Go to Teshi Salem Park. Mm -hmm. Teshi Salem, mm -hmm. we used to have a problem there. Mm -hmm. Where the, along the coast, where the people dump over there. Mm -hmm. Go there now. We provided central containers there. The place has been cleared. We've even come to, to gravel, send gravels to the place to level the place over there. Mm. We were there even with the military and got the community people Fantastic. also to support us over that. I'm saying that... It's sweet to hear I'm that. I'm saying that it's no. not sweet to hear, just to sweet to hear that. I'm providing you facts and for you to check. I appreciate that. And I'm, I'll saying check. that I'm saying that mm -hmm. there are many locations that you can mention. Mm. Don't let us discuss the matter of sanitation of Accra mm. to one community. No problem. Let's look at the whole Let's move to another Accra. community. And then it helps all Behind the Independence so. Square, that's not Choco. People open defecate by the beach. What has been done about open defecation along the coast? Behind the Independence Square, there is nobody there. Because they, behind the Independence Square, as part of the marine drive, everybody has been cleared over there. Hey, you haven't been going to the beachfront lately. I am saying that behind mm. The Independence Square mm. up to Art Center. Mm -hmm. That is part of the Marine Drive. I haven't stretch. said people live there. I said I'm they saying to that engage in nobody open lives there. Let me show. Let me tell you the place probably that you wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. Behind the the Oso Castle. Okay. Probably that's where you want to make. So they still to. engage in open defecation there. I'm saying that behind the Oso Castle, probably that's where you want to. Make I have I have told you why now, I'm behind saying the, behind mm -hmm. the Oso Castle. Mm -hmm. What happens there is that. Is the final drain that links into the sea. Mm -hmm. So all the debris in the gutter, from upstream, it can even from um, Equapin through um, Achimota. Achimota, East Legon, wherever, you know, gets into that drain and then enters into the sea. Mm -hmm. So anytime it rains, everything is washed up there. As I speak to you now, Protocoli has provided 20 guards there who have been doing daily cleaning over there. Okay. So, the, I'm, so I'm, not, I'm not referring to imported rubbish. I'm referring to people going there to engage in open defecation by the beach. That's what I was speaking to. What deliberate measures have you been put in, putting in place to prevent people from engaging in open defecation at the beachfront? Well, first of all, one thing what we do is that people engage in the open defecation are also arrested and prosecuted. But to provide a permanent solution to the problem over there. There are two things that we have been doing. One is a community toilet, and more importantly, is a household toilet where you want people to attend nature's call in a more decent manner. Mm -hmm. I have given you a figure yes, that as I speak to you now, and let's stick to that figure, that we've provided over 27, 000, close to 30,000 household toilets. Okay. It's unprecedented. Okay. At about 30,000 household toilets. There are many more people that mean under the Gamma project. And then there's another facility under what we call GASLIP, which is also under the Ministry of Sanitation mm -hmm. from AFDB. Okay. That is also to provide additional toilets that we want people also to take advantage of. So it's important that you situate the issues within the right context no what we are doing. I can't sit here and say that we have completed our journey. No. Okay. What percentage have, have done, you talked? We have done significantly well, and I'm sure that per, per the discussion that we have done, and if you look at the whole, if you scan the whole of Accra, what percentage will you give? What percentage do you think you have talked? I'm saying that because I'm working for you. You're working for four years for me. I'm working for you. If yes. I should calculate one year, I mean four years, and divide it into 100. No, as of today. By now, as today. by now you should have done over 75 percent, going to 100 percent. I, I don't know that calculation, but what I'm saying is that as of today, mm -hmm. in your view, mm -hmm. when you look at the situation from 2016 mm -hmm. up to now, what percentage will you give? There's you are the voter. At the end of the day, you will decide. There's still filth. That's what matters. No, you are asking of percentage. 
If you can't give me, you are the one who is doing So where that. are the fields? So let's deal with the where the fields. We've already discussed fields so yeah, much. Yeah, we've discussed your call. Let's, so let's move from fields. Decon no, no, no. Congestion no, no. I, I would just to stay there and make sure we deal with that. We've discussed your call. Mm -hmm. Words. The drains of Accra Were. are filthy, are smelly. Were. They are choked with plastic bags. Were. That I everywhere in Accra. I've mentioned everywhere. to you that the drain in you front see, of the president's see, house I've heard, I've at heard, Paloma. I, I would have wished. I would have wished. Mm -hmm. I would have wished mm -hmm. that when you are coming to interview somebody. Yes. You prepare okay because you are coming to point to the person's face okay about his failures i have pointed to and, you and i have pointed no I've better better okay. you are coming to point to the person's face you are filled in all these things mm -hmm. it is the responsibility of the person to make sure he deals with it okay. that's why you put me there okay that's why the president put me there to work for you so so next time when you want to engage me on these things i would have appreciated that you come with the list of issues that you mm. think that these areas have not been dealt with. Okay. Let us deal with it. So I would have and then it will be happy. Fantastic. I would have dealt us. I would have come with a list if you were not living in Accra, but you have you live in Accra. I have listed for you places. I have mentioned Choco and said we have overflogged Choco, we should leave it. And I'm wondering why we should leave a choked environment because it's overflogged when it has not been fixed. I don't I, I don't get to what you are trying to say. You've said that we should we've Talking we are about talking about Accra, yeah. and you have limited the discussion. No, to I have not limited. If you tell me I'm that we are coming to discuss no, Choco, I'm giving we'll, you, I'm, we'll I'm discuss no, I've mentioned, sorry, I have mentioned the drains of Nungwa to you. I've said to you that people are engaging in defecation in Nungwa, the drains of where? the Teshi Nungwa estate. I can, I can take you there if you want to go on a visit. I where? Would like, the Teshi Nungwa estate, I've said that. Unless, I, you, are I not really unless you are not familiar with that I'm area. I'm familiar with everywhere. I want you to point out to me this area. The, when you point out, you know no, what I, I said you should to, point out no, to me? I have said to you. I have told you that it's my responsibility to deal with it. I have said to you. If the you drain point out between, to me that this okay, area we have a so problem, the drain, how much that the drain, is work? The drain between Nungwa Hilltop and A-Life. You can go check that. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure you are very familiar with it. I am very no. familiar with that place. I, no. You have no idea. I can take you there. I have said to you that there's open defecation happening on the beaches, and we can just move here with I, our cameras I not, rolling. I have not denied. We'll I have so not I'm denied. not sure what you mean by specifics. No, I have because, not denied. No, mm, don't make an attempt to justify your position. I'm saying that. No, I'm just. I have mm. not denied that there is no open defecation. Okay. But I have told you the intervention that we have provided. Okay. And yet you still want to dwell on some problems that has existed and yet an intervention is being provided. If we are, if you are staying aloof and we are not doing anything at all, you have every right to say that you are failed. When you say but this is the time that I have provided you with adequate data okay. and information mm -hmm. to guide the discussion and to guide your position and let you take a decision that, oh, okay, some significant effort is being made. However, we're still falling short of ABC. We are working towards it. That's the way the conversation When you go. say that Accra is going to be the cleanest city, what are the indicators that would show that Accra has become the cleanest city in Africa? Well, first of all, I, I think that um, we have seen heaps of refuse in Accra. And the first thing for us was to make sure that we cleared those mountains of heaps of refuse. Because it's a very bad spectacle. Number two, the ultimate is that Sanitation issue is a public health matter. Today, we are not reporting issues of cholera. So the indicator to see that sanitation is going bad is the, is the incidence of cholera. Mm -hmm. And I've given you cholera figures in 2015. Mm -hmm. And that energized our president and said that we cannot live in a country where Cholera will be killing all of us over here. This is something which is manageable. It is preventable. We are not reporting incidents of cholera cases. So at the end of the day, all the things that we are talking about, if you put the sanitation issue into a public health basket, mm -hmm. you'll be able to get the indicators right and see whether we are making progress or not. Okay. And I've given you figures also to support okay. that. So it's very, it's very important for us also to appreciate the fact that when I spoke about infrastructure and I said that it's not an off the shelf, but it takes a bit of time. Okay. So what have you done in terms of infrastructure? Okay. One, we've also worked with the private sector to make sure that we are providing infrastructure to also people. So you go to Achimota, you have a transfer station because Accra, as we talk about, generates about 5,000 tons of waste daily. 
So you ask yourself, when they generate about 5,000 tons of water, where do you where dispose of it? Mm -hmm. It's very important you get mm -hmm. it. If you don't have, if you don't plan from the end, we'll always have a problem from the beginning. So we started planning from the end. Where should be the final disposal site? And for us within the city center, you have a transfer station to be able to withhold the refuse when it is generated before it's sent to the final disposal site. Now we have 1,000. It has a 1,000 capacity, 1,000 uh, tons capacity at Achimota. There's a waste recycling and compost plant also along the Moshe Road, which is first of its kind, you know, um, in Ghana, which is also treating over four, 400 tons of waste daily. So 1,400 is taken. We came to meet one also which is at Teshi, which also has a capacity of 1,000. So ultimately, what you are looking at is that where is the infrastructure so this, so this within solid, this solid waste you're talking solid. about so mm -hmm. where is the infrastructure okay. which is available mm -hmm. for you to be able to deal with that okay. so in 2017 2018 when you keep talking about sanitation yes but we knew that sanit uh, infrastructure must be provided first okay once infrastructure is provided then you roll back mm -hmm. and see how you'll be able to address Very address well. some of these things come to the central business district you will see huge trucks you know double trailer trucks mm -hmm. that have come and they'll be collecting refuse every night mm -hmm. you know in the central business district and many other places as well so there's there's, there's a lot of effort that had been put in in making sure that but we're you can't give me a percentage of what you have done so i'm saying that i'm working for you so you you, 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 leave, you leave me to, to you, about you, blowing you, my heart fantastic so congestion it's, it's in about car, you uh, i it's, it's pretty difficult in terms of traffic situation. Now, people have decided to opt for Okada because they want to weave through the traffic. Convince them why they shouldn't hop onto an Okada when the traffic is choked. Well, let us deal with traffic, then we come to Okada. Mm -hmm. In every part of the world, the city center, during the daytime, there's a lot of vehicle that comes into the city center. And Accra is not an exception. In fact, Accra situation compared to many African cities we are far, far, far better than what happens in many other cities. Sometimes traffic occurs not because there are too many cars at a location. Sometimes as a result of a discipline, sometimes a traffic signal may not be working, or sometimes the traffic signal could be functioning, but it's not responding to the flow of traffic. Mm -hmm. So at an intersection, you will see that you rather need a human being like a policeman to be there to control the traffic, to allow it to go, instead of um, the traffic signal. Because most of our traffic signals are not intelligent. But currently, the urban road is now fixing traffic signals yeah. which are interconnected that will be intelligent and will be responding to the flow of traffic. Once we are done on that, then it means that you don't need people to be manning traffic at locations. Okay. But in the central business district, and let us appreciate the context where we are, the central business district is an informal market. So when you're coming into the central business district, which is largely an informal market, the trading activities there, it's not like you're going to Accra Mall or you're going to West Hills Mall. Mm -hmm. It's largely informal. Mm -hmm. It requires walking and the rest. In terms of places even to park, people don't want to park and walk to, to go and buy anything. You want to take your car to where the shop is or to go and buy tomato. It's, it's never done anywhere in mm. the world. Mm. Just at Otagon. Otagon has a car park capacity more than 1,000. People can walk here and go to Tudu, Tema Station, and Mokola to go and buy their wares and, and go back drive. home. Even. But they still want to drive to, to Mokola. Okay. You get to Rollins Park. The car park capacity there is over 400, 400 cars. People can go and park there and go and buy their things. But they won't do it. Just in between the, on the high street, uh, between Absa and where Stamp Church used to okay. be, you know, there's a car park capacity of, of, which is belong to a city car park. is about 450. Have you, have you considered can, charging people for driving you, through a car? I can give you the mm. car park facilities okay. that we have within the central business district that people will park and then will absorb the traffic on the But road. they will not do it. So I'm asking, you know, do you think and can you charge people who drive into Accra? 
Well, uh, I think that uh, is a matter that can have to be discussed at a higher level. It's not on the tables now. It's not, it's not on the table. I'll come back so you tell me about Okada plus sure. Kayaye. This is face to face on CTTV. We are coming to you uh, from our studios, of course, in Adabraka. My guest is the Accra Mayor, Mohamed Nieje. So I'm here speaking to you uh, from his office, rather, even though we are live on our transmission channels in Adabraka. We'll be back to talk about that and more. Don't worry. You welcome back to Face to Face. You talked about how you plan to fix the congestion issues. Ayalolo is a very important tool you could have deployed. So it prevents cars from coming into the central business district. And yet, we have over 20 of them parked at your depot at Adenta. Some are parked at Achimota. They are not moving around. Why? Well, they are moving, but they are moving at schedule times. Because um, 2017, 2018, when we deployed them, um, from morning to evening, afternoon, um, we realized that uh, we're making huge losses. So we redesigned their model and started working at peak time. So when you go there in the afternoon, most of them are park. Okay. So they do peak time in the morning and peak time in the evening. And they sh do some shuttle in the afternoon. Limited buses do shuttle in the afternoon. So that's okay. what we are doing, just to cut the losses. Unless central government is willing to put in a lot more money and consider it as a social service mm -hmm. and then we can say that okay let us get more buses Run deploy it. them and then by so doing you are also getting the trotters also out, of, out the of the way how about okada you think that despite the challenges we talk about where there are poor roads in some parts of greater Accra, and because you are mayor of Accra, i want to just give you that luxury to go all the way to amasama and have power someone who wants to move from amasama main road into some village is a motorbike that can take them. They need a bike. Someone who is coming to Accra Central Business District, they are coming from, say, Achimota, the traffic is too much. They want to hop onto an Okada. Convince them why they should not do that. Well, uh, let me tell you something. Globally, the eight cause of death is through road accidents. And in this country, the National Road Safety Authority report that from 2016 to 2017, motorcycle death has increased from 16% to 28%. Um, uh, no, from 21% to 28%. That tells you the number of people that die on the road Over all 500. the time. Mm. And it's very important for us to appreciate the matter from the safety perspective. It is totally unsafe for you to use a uh, motorbike or three-wheeler for commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. And it is that wisdom that informed the, 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 the enactment of the LI-21 is a road traffic regulation 2012 that prohibits the use of motorcycle for commercial purposes. Now, there's an argument that it provides employment and it's for convenience, which I've heard. And all those arguments are correct and they are right. But the end of the game is that people are dying as a, as a result of it. Mm. So instead of urging on government to make sure that the road infrastructure that we are providing, make sure that it takes care of the old modes of transport, the argument is shifted to a certain political means that people are want to want to win uh, uh, out of out of the 2020 uh, campaign and election mm -hmm. to push for okada certainly there are a lot of people that have gained in it let me give you a, a, a scenario in in lagos just one lagos the whole of lagos they were using okada but they realized that the casualties on the road was becoming too much and unbearable and for that matter they revise it and make sure that all highways and major roads, no, no, no motorbike is allowed to drive on them. And that has reduced the fatalities on that, on that stretch by 33%. Okay. So we should be very mindful of some of these decisions that we are taking. I am not in favor of it unless we have decided that we are providing the infrastructure and the safety net to deal with it. Okay. Or else you are pushing people just to go and die. Talking about congestion in the central business, in 2012, my attention was drawn to an AMA bylaw that forbids 
passengers from buying from hawkers and hawkers selling to passengers sure. on board the, the sure. trotro. I don't know if it's still holding. It is, it is. There was a bylaw also that obligates trotro owners to have waste baskets in their cars. Yes. Is that still in? Is that still a law that's in your books? Yes. You're not enforcing it. Well, I, I must admit that some of the things have been a bit relaxed simply because during my transition period and the creation of municipalities, how to look at urban transport in totality because the, the Accra as, as a whole um, is not managed by only my itself. When you move here, you have Clotty Kole, you have Ayawasu West, you have all these. And there's a need for us to have an urban transport plan that will have overriding authority on all of us because transportation is cross-jurisdictional. When people bought trotro from here, they, by five minutes, they move into another mm. uh, jurisdiction. Mi municipal, municipal assembly. Mm -hmm. Another two minutes, they move into another mm. municipal mm. assembly. So that has not helped but us But that should not prevent you from people. checking people. You have city guard checking people at the trotro station, whether they have a waste bin on board And or I'm not. saying that that is not quite helpful because the trotros move from one area to area. They are not moving within your jurisdiction. Yeah, so that you, you say have that total for, control. Yeah, so you say Do that you every trotro coming from Wager, you can be free in Wager, but if you enter AMA and you don't have a waste basket, we yeah, but will, we will, you, see, we'll you are looking it. at you are looking at Accra mm -hmm. as a whole, and as much as the bylaw now is restricted to AMA, um, certain policy decisions you must be mindful of its implications that it should cover the whole of Accra, else you will be. Uh, very discriminatory in the implementation. So go to the coordinating council and like make a strong case for that's why. The case, that's the case I have made that something like transport it's, it's supposed is cross jurisdictional. So you should work. You should Sanitation work is cross jurisdictional. Mm -hmm. These are things that are cross jurisdictional. Fortunately, under the Greater Accra Resilience Integrated Project, there's there's a fourth arm of it which is seeking to create a development authority, and a development authority that will look at the, the development of the whole of Accra. I'm quite hopeful, as the Ministry of Local Government is working on it, it comes into fruition early. Because that will help all of us, those who are working within the urban space, to know that this is the position that all of us are going, okay. so that your, your interventions may not sound discriminatory. In 2016, you promised Kayaye headquarters in Accra that you provide them with hostel facilities. Yesterday, I saw a story somewhere where there was a group of Kayayes in Ashanti region who said, in Kumasi, who said that the hostels have not been provided, so they are going to join NDC and, and vote for NDC. In Accra, have you built hostels for Kayaye? Well, uh, um, I, I've not heard about the, the Kayaye uh, that, in Kumasi. that they are going to do that. But that's their right. Mm. You know, well, one, one thing that I have to make it very clear is that... Um, there were a list of promises that we made. And we cannot pick one out of the many and say that we haven't done well. So in the, on the issue about Kayaye, the support that you've been giving them, what are the other support that you've been giving okay. them? Because well? we don't have a lot of time in Accra, have you built a single hostel for Not Kayaye? yet. When will you do that? Not yet. We've, we're, what we wanted to do was to provide them a hostel facility in the old Fadaba. Mm. Because Kayaye, as you note, note, note the, the way they are, uh, you may see them wandering around Accra, but when they finish, they go back to the old Fadaba yes. where they are. So, so if when you move when them, you... hang on a bit, mm. if you move them out of their comfort zone, they will never go. There have been a lot of people, a lot of them that have been provided with uh, skill development, even support fund in terms of uh, 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 loan and some of them even offered to go to school. If you don't connect them to the old Fadaman community, mm -hmm. it will be practically difficult for you to no achieve problem. your own. We, are, we, we, we had land problems over there and that delayed the, okay. the, the construction. Thank you. Accra Mayor uh, or Metropolitan Chief Executive for Accra, Mohamed Nia Jesu, was my guest on Face to Face. My name is Umaru Sandamad. We'll be back next week to bring you another interview here on City TV. Stay with us.